okay, we've said that the f of a equals b, f of c equals a. Now the intent was that there would be numbers for these symbols, but that's okay. We can do this with symbols just as well. So we want to graph, well, we want to sketch the corresponding points on a graph of y equals f of x. So if f of a equals b, then a is your x-coordinate and b is a y-coordinate that corresponds to that x-coordinate, meaning the point a, b is going to lie on the graph. So you can say, well, down here on the axis, the x-axis, we have a, and over here we have b. Then f of c equals a similarly corresponds to the point for x equals c, y equals a, the point c, a, so that the c would be here on the x-axis, and a would be here. We're asked to find the average rate of change of y with respect to x, given this information. It's a good idea to start with the graph, and then the average rate of change is as we should know, change in y divided by change in x. What's the change in y? Well, y starts at b and ends at a. If you want the change in a quantity, you subtract the earlier quantity from the later one. So that the change in y is a minus b. The change in x, well, the x coordinate goes from a to c. That would be then c minus a. Change in x would be c minus a. Now on the graph, your delta x is c minus a. That corresponds to this side of the triangle. It actually corresponds to movement from here to here. Okay, c minus a is then the run from this point to this point. Now the rise from this point to this point, well that's your change in y indicated by this arrow. And it's a minus b. Where you end up with uh, where you end up minus where you start. There's your rise. So that the average rate is also the rise divided by run. Slope here equals rise divided by run equals a minus b over c minus a. And of course that's identical to the average rate of change. So we see that the average rate of change is represented by the slope from AB to CA. And we could also express AB as A f of A, since f of A equals B, and CA as the ordered pair C f of C, since f of C equals A. Okay. That relates rate of change to slope and gives you some useful notations with which to think about functions and their behavior. So you want to try to understand every bit of this. Okay, the other thing on the quiz, you had three points, and we'd ask you to uh, shift uh, the points horizontally, plus three units, vertically minus two units, and then move everything twice as close to the x-axis in the most direct, along the most direct path. This is much like what we asked you to do for homework um, for the written assignment, on which everybody that submitted it did well enough that I was able to give them full credit. Uh, there will be a subsequent assignment this weekend, um, another written assignment, where I get a little more picky on it, because I want everybody to understand this process. It's one of the most important things you can learn in pre-calculus. Okay, so we start with three points, okay? Now, if the value of A is 4, the value of B is 5, the value of C is 6, then the point AB would be 4, 5. So we're going to start with this point, 4, 5. And then the next point would be the point CA, as we stated in the quiz. So CA would be 6, 4. So here's the point CA, that's 6, 4. Um, we get 6, 4 a couple of times. So 
Anyhow, there's the point six four. And then BC would be five six. That would be this point. Now it'll be a little easier to see what's going on. I go ahead and make the curve through these three points yellow. So five six, negative four five, and six four are our three original points. Now, if we shift everything horizontally plus three units, that means we move everything three units in the horizontal direction. What's that going to do to the coordinates of the points? Well, our point negative four five here is going to move three units to the right. Well, there's an arrow moving at three units to the right. If we move three units to the right from negative four five, we end up, well, we move from negative four to negative one. That's three units to the right uh, without changing the y coordinate because we only move in the horizontal direction. That gets us to the point one four. Now, I didn't have all my colored chalk with me. I'm going to circle the point one four to indicate that that's the point where we end up. So that would be the green transformation here. Okay, four five goes to negative one five. Similarly, six four, we move three units to the right. That means we're going to have to add three to the x coordinate. We get to the point nine four. And here's the point nine four. And if we move the point five six three units to the right, we get to eight six. Here's eight six, and we connect those with the green curve. The green curve is going to have the same shape as the yellow curve, but it's going to be three units to the right. So we've shifted this graph three units to the right. Now we shift it two units vertically, negative two units vertically, which is two units downward. Well, that's going to change the y coordinate because when we move downward, that changes the y coordinate. We're going to reduce the y coordinate by two. And we're going to add negative two to the y coordinate. So the point negative one five, and I don't know that I, you know, I label that negative one four. That should be negative one five. Negative four five goes to negative one five. So negative one five then goes to negative one three. So here's negative one five, negative one here, five here. We go down two units, that gets us to negative one three. And here is point negative one three. Um, so negative one three. Now in this graph, and this graph is going to be the orange graph, if you wish. And then we have um, 9, 4 goes to 9, 2. So here's the point 9, 2 here. And the point 8, 6 goes to 8, 4. And point 8, 6 will go down to 8, 4. And that's going to be this point. Then we move twice as close to the x-axis along the most direct path. Well, if you think about it, that means our x coordinate is going to become half as great. Because, for example, here we're at the point 8, 4. If we get twice as close to the x-axis, it's going to be at 8, 2. It's going to be directly below this, twice as close to the x-axis, twice as close as 4 to 0, because the y coordinate is 0 on the x-axis, is 2. So we get the point 8, 2. Now we've got that. Here. Similarly, the point 9,2 will go to the point 9,1. So, and we didn't have the point 9,4, we had the point 9,2. So I need to. That. So this is 9, 2. 
close to 9, 2 over 2, which is just 9, 1. And there it is. I'm not sure I wrote 9, 4 in there, except as looking at this. Okay, then negative 1, 3. This point was twice as close. It'll end up twice as close at negative 1, 3 halves. And now we have the red curve. And we notice that the red curve is going to be a little bit flatter. It's not going to be have as much curvature as the other three. These three curves all occur just by moving all the points the same distance. So the shape of the curve is going to remain the same. This curve, the further a point is from the x-axis, the further it's going to move. So if we're uh, four units from the x-axis, we're going to end up just two units from the x-axis. We'll have moved two units. If we're only two units from the x-axis, then when we transform that point, we're going to only be one unit from the x-axis. So this point doesn't move as far as this point, and this point moves not as far as this one, but further than this one, so that the arrows representing this transformation can be drawn like so. Okay, this arrow is shorter than this one. This one is kind of in between these two. One other thing that I'll mention that I did not mention in class, and it's worth noting, if we've got three points like this, three points here, 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 there are lots of ways to connect them. We don't have to connect them with a single smooth uh, arc. We could uh, connect them in any way we want, as long as we get a function. What we can't do is we can't connect them like this. not valid because this does not represent the graph of a function. If your x-axis is down here and x is here, you get two values for that value of x. So a function can only have a single value, and of course that's the vertical line test. So if, you, if your curve violates the vertical line test, then it's not the graph of a function, and we want to graph a function. Now, object to that on the original assignment, but I'll be looking for that on the next assignment on this exercise.